Welcome to an America East chat. I'm Andy Katz. Pleased to be joined by UMass Lowell's Obi Noel and Pat Duquette, the head coach of the River Hawks. Um, I don't think we thought we'd be having this conversation a couple of weeks ago as you play for the championship against Hartford, not Vermont. Uh, obviously, the expectation was going to be Vermont, UMBC. You guys blew that up with a comeback win at UMBC. I'm going to go to you first, Obi. Uh, you guys were down big before Connor Withers got hot. Uh, and this whole team defensively locked in. How did you guys pull off the double-digit comeback? Well, we just stay. We just stay positive. Uh, we've been in this position before. We've been in that position before when we played Stony Brook um, in the first first game of the playoffs, first round, and we knew just that we could just stick with it, um, keep our confidence, don't get too down. We know we could come back. And I feel like throughout the whole game, we knew the game wasn't over. We knew going into the second half that. We still have a lot of time left, and we just attack it with the same mentality we have with Stony Brook, and we pulled off uh, another unbelievable comeback. Pat, you knew that this was in this team, the ability to do this. You've seen moments of this. You've had quality efforts, not able to sometimes finish those games, even out of conference. Uh, what sold you that this was possible to be able to play for a championship with this group? Um, I think the way that we've handled – um, the adversity, the challenges this year. Uh, I've seen my group, how resilient they are. Um, so, you know, it was, it was a work in progress and uh, we had a lot of bumps along the way. And, you know, I, I don't, I'm not one to make excuses and my team never did. And, and I think all of those things, whether it was the COVID, three COVID pauses, uh, losing your best player for a month, uh, losing four home games, you know, it was one thing after another, our guys reacted the right way. So um, when they show that level of resilience and maturity, that usually transfers uh, to the court. So I knew we had that type of group. Uh, then we needed to get Obi back. And, and we were quite real honest as a team. When Obi first got injured, uh, man, it was hard. And, and everybody was down. And then we realized, I realized, and I told the team, this is the best thing for us because we need to have other guys step up and – really shoulder the responsibility. And then when we get them back, I think we can be even better. And that's what the guys did, Obi. Obi was awesome from the sidelines. Nobody cheered more for his teammates. He provided a lot of leadership at the games without playing, but the other guys were forced uh, to grow up quick and they did. So now I think that made us a better team. And now that we have Obi back, um, I, you know, obviously we can compete for a championship. Obi, uh, there could have been multiple times and, and no one would have said, you know what? You know, if you guys had opted out, we understand it. We've seen other teams do it. One team actually in your league, you know, Maine decided not to continue. How close were you and these and some of your teammates to doing that, especially as you went into another pause? I don't think we, we was ever going to get to that point of um, our players opting out. Um, we knew at the beginning of the season what was at stake and what we was getting into. And we just we just stuck with it. We know it's going to be a tough year. Uh, we knew these things are going to happen. Like stuff pauses, um, positive cases. That's out of our control. Um, so this whole year, we we knew what we what we was getting into, and we just we just stuck with it. Um, and me and some of the other older guys, we had a lot of meetings. We talked to the guys and make sure everybody's good mentally. And we just stuck with it. We got through all the pauses, and now it's all worth it because we're here in the championship game. So. Yeah, to that point, Pat, uh, the locker room scene, we've seen this across the country, but especially for you and your staff, because you took over a program that was going from, you know, D2 to D1 into a new league. Uh, I'm just curious, what, what was that emotion like as you guys are celebrating on the road at UMBC um, in that just that sort of that raw feeling of, you know what, we're going to play for a championship? Yeah, it's funny. I, I forgot about the second one that was looming when the coaches talk outside the locker room, you know, we do our, our cheer and our celebration on the court, which I've learned that I'm really out of rhythm. And so is my athletic director with the, the jumping cadence. So, um, but I haven't had much experience doing that OB in the last couple of years. And then after the game, the coaches meet, and then you go to the locker room. I forgot about what was, what was being planned in the locker room. So that was another surprise. Obviously we got dosed in, in water and, um, it's, it's unlike anything, Obi. I mean, you know, you and I haven't experienced that, and that's been these guys' dreams 
and goals the whole time. And, you know, they realize they're getting close. And, and that's where the excitement's generated from, is, is those guys getting close to their biggest dream. All right, so let's look ahead to Saturday. Um, to beat Hartford, both of you are under, uh, underdogs. I mean, I don't think there's a favorite. Um, it just happens, the game happens to be in Hartford. But you're a five and six seed. I mean, really, it's a 50-50 game. Uh, how do you beat them, Obi? I think we just want to keep doing what we've been doing, just stick with the game plan. Um, we're going to attack practices the same way. We're going to scout, and we're just going to find a way. And I think that's what it's going to come down to. We're not going to do anything crazy, anything special. We're going to keep doing what we've been doing, and hopefully we come out with the W. So, Pat, you know, you guys have been sort of playing with fire, double-digit deficits and, and playing from behind. How do you avoid that on Saturday? Yeah, well, I would just say well said by Obi. First, uh, the biggest way to avoid it is to be true to ourselves. Even though the moment is bigger than it's been and it's a special game, we can't do anything differently than what we've been doing um, that, you know, that's brought us this far. So I tell my guys that all the time, like, just be the best version of yourself. Um, that'll put us in position. So the double digit um, um, leads uh, to the other team certainly wasn't planned. Um, but um, it's a long game and, you know, there are ups and downs and sometimes you can't avoid those. Um, it's also sometimes hard to play with those larger leads. And we learned that against New Hampshire. We were up 21 points and it got down to three. So we've been on both sides of it, which I think both has been a good experience for us. Um, and I expect it to be a very competitive, close game. I'd be surprised if anybody breaks away that much. All right, last thing for both of you really quickly here. Uh, the swing of emotion. I mean, it can go whew, from one end to the other of just what could happen on Saturday, uh, being so close to this historic first ever NCAA tournament berth for Lowell and for the two of you. I know, Pat, you've done it as an assistant coach before, but as a head coach, um, you know, and the feeling that you're going to get if you can cut down that net versus that unbelievable heartache if you fall short. Uh, just your, your, your swirling emotions as you get ready for this one, Obi and Pat, if you could just add this to me for me. Like, like you said, like I've, I've never been in this position before, so there's a lot of emotion, but I'm going to try to control it all um, until the game's over. So, yeah, I'm excited, but I still got to stay composed and just, and just stay ready. So that's all I have to say. Yeah, whichever team does a better job of that is probably going to win the game. I mean, we know how hard we're going to play. We know what's at stake. Um, and I think at some point you've got to tune it out. You know, where, whenever that may be, maybe it's the night starting the night before the game, uh, day of. Um, when you get on the floor, it's just got to be another game, and that's that's super hard to do. But um, you know, you got to do it if you're if you're going to be able to play composed and under control. Well, congratulations on getting to this point. Uh, it's been an incredible journey for both you and for this program. Uh, good luck Saturday. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate it.